Hey everyone, Rob B here with Rob D and you are listening to the Property Podcast. It's a market update episode and we've got loads to cover in this episode. We've got mortgages, house prices, holiday lets and will AI be replacing me and Rob? Hello and welcome to the show where we take time out from advising a multi-million pound property fund which you can learn about at portfolio.co.uk and organising hundreds of property transactions every year and we bring you some of what we learn along the way. In a market like we have now, it's never more important to know and understand what's going on and understand what's really going on, get beneath the headlines and really get to grips with what's happening in the market and what you should be doing as a result. That is exactly what we're going to be doing for you in this episode. And that's what we always endeavor to do for you. So if you're not already subscribed, now would be a great time to make sure you do that. So before we get into the episode, make sure you're following us on Apple Podcasts. You can hit the little plus button or on Spotify, you just hit follow or whichever other player you use. I'm sure you can figure it out. But do make sure you're following along so you can stay informed and make better investments. So a few weeks ago on the podcast, we put out the bat signal. We put out a call for people who were working in fintechs who wanted to grow our network. And it was brilliant. We got so many great responses back. I think I've been through and replied to all of them now. It took a while. And we've made some amazing connections. It's always so good to be reminded of all the interesting people who listen to the show and, frankly, to use it for a bit of networking on our part. And so, Rob, it was so successful. We're going to do something similar again. Yeah, we've had this in the works for a while. What we've been looking to do is work with investors who have more than £200,000 to invest each and every time. Now, I appreciate that most people listening will go, oh, wait a minute, I'm not at that level. And that's absolutely fine. The podcast, though, has tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of listeners. And we know there's a group of you in the audience who would be very interested in doing property-led investments at that sort of level. And because of our network and Property Hub Invest and portfolio and everything else, we get exposed to loads and loads of opportunities that don't sit well with the other two businesses, but would really suit people at this level. So we do know that investments of at least 200k each and every time is not for everyone, but that's why we've created the other businesses to help everyone. And this is the last sector we hadn't cracked. We've been able to work with people for many years now with Property Hub Invest and you need a minimum of 50k there. But portfolio, we have the mission to bring property investment to everybody. And we've got that number down as low as £1,000 now as the minimum investment amount. And we are aiming to get it even lower in the future. So we're trying to go across the board and we think this is the final piece of the jigsaw. So if you are interested, we've made it super simple like last time to get in touch. Rob, do you want to share the contact details? Yeah, if you are interested in property-led opportunities at that sort of level, you're interested in seeing opportunities like this, interested in maybe networking with us and other people who are in that sort of position, then just drop us an email, hello at propertyhub.net. Email that address, it'll find its way to Rob and me, and we will reply to you personally. So again, just email hello at propertyhub.net. Let's start with a very quick recap of the budget, because... The budget feels ages ago, right? But it it wasn't. It was only a few weeks ago. And still the impact is kind of being felt and people are trying to understand what does this mean for me? So as a way of a quick recap to help you understand what it may mean for you, capital gains tax, the allowance is being cut currently at £12,300 per person per year, down to £6,000 in April, and then the following year down to £3,000. That's the relief. That's the amount of capital gains you can hit before you start to pay any tax. So we had a bit of an allowance. That allowance is disappearing. Dividends allowance, that was already small at £2,000. And now it's going to £1,000 and then down to £500. So for people who have limited companies and pay themselves dividends, and some people in property, many people in property, in fact, run their businesses through a limited company, that allowance is pretty much going to zero. And stamp duty, Rob, is being held. And it's being held until after the election or 2025 as the date. It's interesting how they've not touched that and they are leaving stamp duty alone, way alone, until after the next election. And I don't think it's wild to say that whoever wins the next election will come up with their own stamp duty policy. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be rolled back. It could be extended further. Or, Rob, we can be optimistic and hope it's abolished completely. I doubt it, though. Yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath for that one. But I think... 
all in all, the takeaway from this is that, yes, there are tax cuts. Yes, there are things that affect property investors specifically, but none of them are that dramatic. It's all just uh, allowances being reduced, which is annoying because it means you're going to end up paying more tax than you were. But it's nothing where it's like, whoa, this is going to be a game changer. There was a story in The Telegraph entitled, Landlords Will Rush to Sell After Tax Crackdown. But I just don't see that being the case. I mean, they're talking about the capital gains tax. But the actual maximum amount of difference that it would make if you sold in the next tax year rather than this tax year is £1,764. That's the effect of losing that allowance. And is that enough for thousands of people to decide, you know what, I'm going to sell my property that I wasn't planning on selling, but I'm going to sell it into a weak market where I probably won't be able to get the price I want or to sell. 1700 quid i don't think so but we will see in fact we answered a very similar question to that in the sunday times column that we have each and every week in the home section of the sunday times if you haven't checked that out make sure you do it's super cool we're very pleased to be there and rob that we pointed out that even if you do feel like you you've got a market that you can sell quickly and that you really think you benefit from those cuts the amount of time you've actually got left to get that transaction through by april is pretty challenging. Yeah, exactly. Getting something exchanged by April shouldn't be a challenge in November, but it is. That would take a fair bit of pressure to achieve that. So you would need to have your sale agreed pretty much today if you actually want to take advantage of current allowances. But if we take the budget as a whole, Rob, I think we said that the purpose of it was to calm the markets in the short term. There's nothing in there that's really going to make a big difference longer term. There's nothing in there that's going to generate a load of growth. There's nothing in there that's going to cut taxes to such an extent that we're suddenly not going to be in a deficit every year. But it was steady and a little bit boring. And it was intended to to calm the markets. And it did. So a 10-year guilt is now yielding less than 3%. It was 4.5%. The FTSE 100 is getting up towards 7,500 at the time of recording. It had fallen below 7,000. And a five-year credit default swap, which is basically a proxy for like how much do people think that the UK government is going to default, the price of that has fallen 78% from a month ago. So just three indicators there showing that the markets have calmed down. So in that respect, the budget has done its job. And of course, when it comes to mortgages, which has been such a hot topic for the last couple of months, those are all a very good thing with regard to the possibility of rates coming back down again. Yeah, there's so much happening in a mortgage market right now. And last week, we had a mortgage market update. And we had a mortgage expert on the show, Kelly Rule, who took us through everything that was happening. And one of the things that she suggested, and, and we've been suggesting as well, is that, you know, don't panic, things will improve. And if you can wait, do wait. And already, there are signs that things are starting to improve. The first story that we have comes from the Mortgage Strategy website. Yes, we will read pretty much any website if it's related to the market. And they are reporting that five-year fixes have fallen below 6% now. So the average five-year fix was above 6%, and now it's fallen to 5.95%. And we fully expect that to keep falling. As Rob said, guilds have reduced, swap rates are improving. So those rates should improve as well. So it's moving in the right direction, and they think it's going to get better. As well as rates, another interesting point that we've seen over the last month is interest cover rates coming down. So this is basically the stress test that lenders apply. to. If mortgage rates were X, would you still be able to afford to pay your mortgage? And these really spiked after the mini budget because mortgage rates in general went up and no one was quite sure where they were going to go up to. Lenders increased their stress tests. Partially, I think it was to manage demand, but also it's because, well, who knows where rates are going to be in the future. But now for five-year products in particular, we're seeing interest cover ratios come down. So Paragon has just reduced theirs to 5.5%, which is only just above the actual pay rate of the mortgage. So they're not testing it at the mortgage plus 2% or whatever it used to be. They're and testing it just above the pay rate, which clearly is an indicator that they're quite happy at that level. And so that's down to 5.5% from 7%, which it was before. Accord has also reduced theirs. Theirs is still higher at 6.5%, but that's been reduced as well. So the signs are pretty good for rates and stress tests to continue to improve as long as nothing crazy happens in the economy, which seems like it shouldn't now for the next little while at least. But If there's one thing we've learned from the last however many years is that you don't bet on stability. Moving on to politics now, or a potential policy from a political party, and the Lib Dems have come out with a, I'll be honest, quite confusing policy around grants for people with mortgages. So if you have a mortgage currently and it goes up by more than 10% of your income, then you would potentially qualify for a £300 
grant or up to £300 grant to help with those mortgage payments. So a bit of maths there required to work out who would qualify for this. I don't know how on earth they would implement it. Maybe they don't think it'd ever come in and it just sounds good. So they don't actually have to think it through and implement it, which is probably, I'm sorry, Dems, the case because I don't think they probably will win the next election. Certainly the odds suggest that to be true. So maybe they don't need to worry about all the detail and just give a catchy headline out there. But Rob, this doesn't come from them just making something up completely. We've seen similar things implemented elsewhere in Europe. Yeah, just this last week, Spain has approved mortgage support, which they say is going to support more than a million households. And across Europe, Hungary, Portugal, Poland and Greece have also approved forms of mortgage support recently, which is interesting, right? Because we talk so much about how governments don't want house prices to collapse. And how do you get a house price collapse? Well, the way you get a proper collapse is people who are unable to pay their mortgages end up getting repossessed by the banks who then have to sell it quickly at a distressed price. Governments really, really don't want that to happen for obvious reasons. And so you end up with pretty bizarre circumstances like these, where you end up with taxpayers effectively subsidising people with mortgages. Based on everything that we've said about the future path of mortgage rates that we expect, it's unlikely that this will become widespread. But I just think it's interesting that it's being talked about. It is interesting. And it's not just the Lib Dems who want to protect homeowners. The Tory party, when putting out their budget, also said they want to look after and protect homeowners and the property market. I'm paraphrasing slightly, but that was what they came out and said. And that's one of the reasons why they held stamp duty. And they are keeping an eye on the property market. The Bank of England have also talked about how they don't want the property market to get into trouble. So all the key stakeholders at the top who can influence what happens to property prices are very motivated to make sure that the properties remain stable and don't crash and actually maybe even perform reasonably well over the over the coming years and again we talked about it before but they are incentivized to make sure that happens you know if you want to win an next election they can't do it with a property crash they've got no chance you could argue at the moment they've got no chance anyway but they've got two years to try and repair their reputation and get people bought in again and one of the things they can do to aid that is make sure that property prices don't crash and possibly it would be beneficial to them for property prices to even go up over the next few years so people feel a little wealthier. It's going to be interesting. I'm also though slightly concerned that there doesn't seem to be much talk around protecting people with rents because it's actually cheaper to own a property in terms of percentage of your income than it is to rent. And we've talked a lot about rents going up at the moment. So I think there's a missed opportunity there to bring out policies that look after people who rent. Of course, I'm not advocating for rent taps or controls or anything like that. But if you're proposing to dish out grants for homeowners, maybe it's only fair that you would do the same for people who are renting. Or maybe you should just leave it alone and try and find better ways to help people not feel so stretched. Let's move on to talking about house prices more directly. And there's been data out in the last couple of weeks from Royal Institute for Chartered Surveyors, which says that more RICS members, so surveyors basically, report prices falling rather than rising, but only by 2%. So very slightly more people reporting price falls rather than price risings, which is the first time that things have been in that direction for 28 months. It also talks about regional variation, which is something that came up in Zoopla data recently as well, talking about prices performing differently in regions that are particularly exposed to borrowing costs going up, expensive areas like London and the South East, basically, compared to other areas. But I just thought it was really interesting that it is only 2% reporting more falls than rises. And we've looked at a few data points in the past, and this is just another one, which kind of shows how what's happening on the ground is a bit out of line with what the sentiment is. So the sentiment around everything at the moment, like Rob, we've talked about this recently, just like talking to people you know, the sentiment around everything is terrible, like so, so, so negative. And when it comes to housing, the consensus seems to be that basically a crash is already underway. Most people probably believe that's the case, which again is just crazy because it's not that long since we were saying, hey, there's a boom going on and no one's talking about it yet. But in reality, if you look at the indicators, it's not happening. It's not happening at the moment. I'm not saying it won't. We haven't got into our predictions yet. But I just think this kind of disconnect between what's actually happening and what people believe is happening is more pronounced than I can remember it being for a long time. It's really interesting. Location, location, location is a new series out at the moment. And of course, I'm watching. Love you, Kirsty and Phil, if you're listening. And it was recorded earlier this year when the property market was on fire. And every episode at the moment is them competing with multiple buyers for every single property that they're looking 
looking at and how people are just missing out and being outbid and just can't get that next home or even on the ladder because of the crazy market. And then you step away from the TV show to, into the media today and it's all doom and gloom. It's not long now until we'll be making predictions for next year and, of course, reviewing our predictions for this year. And it's been a very interesting year, so we'll have to see how we've done that. But a mini prediction for you is that if a market crash or even falls noticeable falls don't happen over the next few months i could see less people buying into the idea and sentiment starting to change particularly in the new year when people are just generally more optimistic anyway i really wouldn't be surprised if that happens that we have a new year bounce or bounce in certainly sentiment anyway and people go oh, okay it's not crashing and maybe it just moves to they're stable or they might rise slowly but i can see that shift happening if something doesn't actually change with the data soon Properties just aren't coming onto the market. There's the amount of properties coming onto the market now is so small. That trend will only continue over the next month and a half as we come into Christmas and holiday seasons because people just aren't as interested. But in the new year, people will be again. And I imagine properties will come back on the market, particularly those who've been held back at the moment. People who've considering selling have probably said to themselves, let's wait to the new year. So I think the new year is going to be a really, really interesting time for the UK property market and the sentiment around it. So I guess that's sort of a mini prediction that if nothing happens with the data, we don't see any meaningful crashes or corrections to property prices, that January we'll see that bounce, we'll see that lift, and people will start to feel better. We will see. We will. I think that's so true. I think it's a really interesting point. And just to, to build on that a bit, there is this idea that you only get a price crash when no one believes there's going to be a price crash. <laughs> Almost by definition, it has to be something that takes people by surprise. So if there isn't much of a correction now, then you're going to get people into the mindset of, ah, oh, property prices are never going to fall, are they? At which point everyone piles in, which of course then does set up the surprise crash for a few years time, which would then keep the cycle right on track. Not saying that is what's going to happen, but you could certainly see how it could. The missing ingredient there, of course, is bank credit, which needs to be present as well. But we've already talked about the political impact imperative to get things going get everyone feeling wealthy so maybe there'll be some things done there as well we will see but it's going to be a very interesting predictions episode when we get there in about a month's time you might not know it, but in the background to this podcast, we run a business called Property Hub Invest that helps investors build portfolios. We use relationships that we have with some of the UK's best developers to secure properties at a discount and make the whole process super hands off. So if you want to invest in high quality properties for the long term and not take up any of your time doing it, then you can check out Property Hub Invest at propertyhub.net slash invest. So moving on now, onto every property investor's favorite subject, EPCs, Rob. We all love them. <laughs> but it turns out they are no longer fit for purpose. Well, that's what the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors is suggesting anyway. Yes, Ricks have said that EPCs are not fit for purpose and the public don't understand what they are used for. That's the quote. And I completely agree. And in the past, I've reported on stories about how lots of tenants are choosing properties specifically on the basis of their EPC rating. And I've said, I just don't see how that's going. I've personally never met anyone who's done that. And it seems that the research that Ricks have done agrees with that. I don't think most people who aren't in property really understand what they are or what the point of them is or even looks at it. And within property, they're widely hated because you get such bizarre things. You can get them done on neighbouring flats that are identical and get different ratings. You can get the same property rated differently by different people on different days. And because of the way they're calculated, you can make actual improvements to their energy efficiency, which de then decreases their rating. So Rick's here calling for a shake-up in EPCs. I think that would be welcome. Will it happen? Don't know. So on to holiday lets now. And the North Yorkshire Council are trying to tackle holiday lets because they believe it's a blight on their area and their towns and Whitby and Scarborough will be among the first in England to adopt this policy and the policy being a doubling of council tax for those with holiday lets in those regions. Wales and Scotland have come up with their own policies to tackle holiday lets. I think the news here isn't so much the doubling of council tax because I don't think that would be enough to deter anybody from buying a holiday let in those areas. But I think it's the sentiment and the willingness to try and tackle them and address the issue. Holiday lets are a really sensitive subject. And I know there are many listeners who have very successful business in holiday lets and don't want to see any of this at all. And are probably very responsible with their holiday lets. But there are also people who are taking advantage of those areas and probably don't have the best interests of those communities that they operate in. And you could probably say the same for buy to let as well. I think where this gets really tricky and really sensitive is that 
buy to lets are still providing homes for people in those communities, where holiday lets are removing homes for people in those communities. And the drive to more regulation and increase in taxes, I think is a trend that's only going to continue. But in the first few months of next year, we're going to tackle holiday lets and get somebody in to represent the holiday lets investor community because Rob and I don't participate in that particular sector and get their side of the story and what they're doing and what their view is on all these changes that are being introduced because this is news of another one it certainly won't be the last and finally one of the constants in 10 years of doing this show has been the government failing to meet its house building targets recently Liz Trust had a clever way around this which is by not having a target at all But then she, in fact, failed to not have a target because Michael Gove immediately came in and reinstated a target of 300,000. Based on everything we've seen in the past, where the government has basically never hit their targets, we've expressed scepticism that they will achieve this. And now it seems even less likely that they will achieve it because there's been a backbench rebellion, which meant that a planned vote on house building targets ended up being cancelled because the government was concerned that it would be embarrassing. So basically, to make this 300,000 target happen, what they were attempting to do was impose mandatory house building targets on local councils. But a significant number of Conservative MPs objected to this. So it's now doubtful whether that'll end up happening, which of course then means it's doubtful that they'll achieve the house building target. And this, Rob, I think is just the story that never changes. There's always talked about a need to build more houses. Then every time you try to do it, whether it's at like a street level or a local authority level or some kind of level, people object to it happening. It ends up not happening and the shortfall just grows. So I'm not surprised to see this target falling apart, but for that to happen in a couple of weeks is pretty quick, even by historical standards. Well, Rob, after the last few years, I don't think anything should surprise us when it comes to politics, but it does give us great content so thank you to the politicians for all that meddling house building targets have been a constant for the property podcast to discuss and it seems that that will not change so we look forward to future politicians also joining in and the fun of setting and failing to meet their house building targets i don't know why they keep doing it i think probably because nobody actually picks them up on it except ourselves because they just seem to get away with just putting silly numbers out year after year and never actually hitting any of them. Like, never. Not once since we started producing a property podcast, which has been going for nearly 10 years now. Not once in those 10 years have they hit a home-building target. But, hey-ho, you never know, Rob. In the next 10 years, they might, so let's keep talking about it. OK, that's what's been happening in the property market over the last month. Plenty in there, as always. But we've just got time before we end the show for Hub Extra, where we give you a resource, a quote, a hack, a book we've enjoyed, something that makes your life a little bit better before we wrap up the show. And this week, I brought along something which I'd say is currently pointless for pretty much everyone listening to this, but really interesting and may become something in the future. So, Rob, because we read and listen to similar things, you're probably aware of everything that's going on in terms of like AI generated written content and art right Mm -hmm. yep so this might not shock you as much as it would shock some people but really in the last year or two there's been unbelievable increases in the quality of what you can do with ai so you could like give it a prompt for like a topic you want it to write about and then it'll churn out a pretty decent 500 word article on the subject and you can't always tell whether it's been written by a person or a computer and just recently this has started happening with art as well so you can now give it a prompt for something that you want an image of and based on those words the AI will then go away and actually generate an image for you. And if you haven't experienced this yet, it's well worth doing. And the reason I bring it up now is that Canva, which is a really popular kind of image creation tool that's used by lots of bloggers and businesses and people like that, has integrated this as part of their offering and you can use it for free. So previously, it's been quite hard to get your hands on these tools, but now you can do so for free. So if you just Google Canva AI, you'll find a link that takes you straight to this. And once you've signed up for an account which is free you can basically pop something into a text box and then see images pop up i tried this for the first time yesterday and for some reason don't know why don't ask how my brain works the first thing to pop into my head was king charles eating a banana on the moon so i thought ah this is going to get it it won't be able to do that what should i get back a few seconds later but a pretty decent cartoon image of king charles eating a banana on the moon i 
could not believe it. Like what it could do is just unbelievable. And I'm using it for silly purposes, but I think it won't be too long until you can actually do some pretty serious stuff with this. And I don't know what it means in terms of putting artists or photographers out of work or whatever. I don't know what it means in terms of being able to like fake things that hadn't happened and like make out and like describe an event that didn't happen and get an image of it as if it did. The implications are kind of beyond me. It has nothing to do with property, but I just think that this is amazing. And now it's free and easy to go and have a play around with. I think you might as well and just kind of blow your mind a bit. It is incredible, Rob, what's happening with AI. And maybe we should be worried because there's AI with voice as well. And if it takes enough data in of a particular podcast or audio source, AI has the ability to recreate those voices and put stuff out. So it's um, maybe putting us out of business in, in the near future as well. I'm sure it won't take too long in terms of the technology leaps needed to match us and probably not much further to surpass us as well. It may produce a Nan's life a lot easier when it comes to editing as well. It probably won't make anywhere near as many as mistakes. So AI is definitely an area of the tech world to keep an eye on doesn't seem to get talked about as much as it should because the stuff that is happening out there is absolutely crazy and it will impact all our lives at some point in the not too distant future this isn't far away until ai is really making an impact on areas of our lives so it it really will happen and it will happen in the not too distant future so getting ahead of this and understanding what it is and what's coming and how you can use it for good hopefully it's probably good investment of your time plot twist this whole episode was actually put together by a computer we just typed in what's happened in the property market in the last month and this is what you got oh no that's not true but it could happen and it would make our lives a lot easier if it did so we will see but that is us done for another week we or our machine overlords will be back next week with another episode in the meantime let us know what you think we are on all the socials at property hub uk and you can learn more about portfolio as ever at portfolio.co.uk have a great week and we'll see you soon bye-bye bye-bye